just like any other parent, I also started my journey when I discovered that my daughter has autism at the age of three. That was 17 years back. So, uh, you know, what do you do usually when you discover that you are a parent? Like many of the parents are there in the uh, audience out there. Many of the people who have come and met me because we, we had a small place outside. Uh, thanks to, again, Indian Inclusion Summit, they made an exception. And uh, I told them only one thing that this is a solution which I think many families across the globe are looking for. And we have hit upon this solution after maybe perhaps decade plus of work in the foundation and now culminating in the life journey of a special needs person in assisted living. So uh, my journey started where, you know, as a parent, I first started reading a lot, trying to meet people across the globe, wherever I was traveling, whichever city I was going, and I was trying to meet people. I was trying to read. During one of these uh, studies, I realized that uh, the majority of the thoughts what people have or the perception people have about autism or neurodiversity stems from research. And that research is mostly medical research. And uh, I stumbled upon one particular study uh, long time back which uh, was done in Australia, where they had evaluated uh, 10 years of data of what kind of investment these uh, studies have been made when it comes to the kind of money they were, that was spent. So this study said, which was studying this 10 years of data on the investments made on uh, research on autism, said that 40% of the money was going into uh, basically finding out how autism can be prevented. Next 20% was being spent, a large chunk, another large chunk, was spent on how once autism happens or any neuro neurodiverse condition happens, how do you prevent the person to become less different, right? Only 7% was being spent on the research on services. I mean, why do I say this? Why this is important? This is extremely important because one in 50 in this world is autistic, is neurodiverse. That's the statistics. There are people out there who actually have this challenge in large numbers, but they don't find the services. And that is what actually drew my attention to the fact that uh, if you look at a typical autistic population, there are very stark figures. Now, what are the stark figures? If you look at uh, the average lifespan of an autistic person, I read in one of the studies, please don't hold me very responsible for the numbers I'm just speaking out because these were random studies over, a, over the last uh, more than a decade and a half where I found that the average lifespan of an autistic person is close to 54 years. The 87% uh, of uh, people with neurodiversity end up having mental illnesses if they are not supported well. So all these studies, all these statistics, all these numbers led me to another uh, interesting analysis which one doctor by the name of Dr. Damien Milton, he had done a study in UK where he spoke about uh, this, this phenomena called double empathy. Now double empathy is a situation where people with two different dispositions, if they are made to interact with each other, they find a lot of difficulty uh, and there is high chance of breakdown in communication. And this he studied because he himself was a parent of a special need that is a neurodiverse autistic uh, son. He studied autistic people where they found that if you dispose one autistic person with a non-autistic person, that is neurotypical person, the chances of uh, you know, communication breakdown is almost certain. That is high chance of communication breakdown. But if you put two neurodiverse person or two autistic person in the same room of varying degree of uh, challenges. I mean, autism is a spectrum, uh, a neurodiversity is a spectrum. So there is, but then the breakdown of communication actually becomes less. That means what? The, if there is an ecosystem, of, if there is a space which is created, which is conducive for people with similar neurodiverse conditions and the people who are sensitized towards neurodiversity, if they're brought together, there's a high chance that they will be have, able to have a good communication. And a good communication means that there is a, there is a 
there's a way of growth because communication is nothing but growth. How will an individual perform in the society if he is not able to communicate, which is what the cha challenge of communication uh, autism is all about. So we thought, at least I thought very, very dearly on this uh, concept, which I just explained to you in the last uh, four to five minutes, is that let us think of a space where we can bring in people who have the, the right mindset, who have the right sensitization, the people who are affected, that is the people with neurodiversity, their caregivers, and if we can curate a space which can be different and thereby this theory of double empathy which Dr. Demin Milton had proved very successfully through various experiments, it could actually create an excellent situation and a condition where the people with neurodiversity and people with autism can thrive and live their life happily ever after. So, at Akshada Assisted Living, we have brought in stakeholders. It could be the parents, it is the authorities, the caregivers, professionals. We are bringing them together in a very unique situation wherein we are tra trying to build a community where people can live, thrive, educate, learn. Based on the fundamentals, we have chosen three pillars of health, safety, and perpetuity. Because it should not be a program which is you know, finishing after the lifetime of the parents or the caregivers. It should perpetuate. And that model is what we have created. We have a place outside. And I'm sure many of you have come. If you have not come, please go and have a look at and speak to the people over there. Uh, and immediately after this, we have a film. You can have a look. And I'm sure that you can take our contacts and we can always talk because there is a high potential of replicability of the model what we have created. So thank you very much once again to the Indian, uh, Indian Inclusion team. And let's have a look at this short four minutes film, what we have created on Akshada Assisted Living.